rained, washed out. 67 overs in this match. But the Zimbabwe team is so weak that if West Indies play the proper team and play proper cricket, would have still won this game comfortable. I heard Captain Craig Bradwitt said that it was a close and competitive match and it shows that Test cricket is still alive and the Zimbabwe team fought back well. I would like to tell Craig Bradwitt, thank you for your marvelous innings of 182. Thank you for your batting especially over the past two years that you are averaging above 50 in test cricket. You have become a real superstar in batting. But with the captaincy, you continue to make poor decisions. You continue to make bad decisions. You continue to pick the wrong team. And it's because we picked the wrong team and our poor strategy, tactics, why Zimbabwe was able to draw the match. Hello everyone, welcome to the Cricket Forum. Please slash a like on the video and click the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. It's free and you click on the once. And please remember, support Best Buy USA who support the show. Click those links in the video description and buy something from Best Buy USA today. A lot have been said about the number of Barbadian in the team. I cannot sit here and agree with the things that are saying. But you know, the more some decisions are made is the louder the cry is going to get. And it is, it is imperative that those who are responsible for selecting West Indies team, selecting West Indies squads, do not leave the impression on persons that the squad is a subjective team. The, the squad shows favoritism. We cannot leave that impression on people that this squad shows favoritism. I have no doubt in my mind that West Indies could have won this match very comfortably. On day one, the condition was overcast. There, there was moisture in the pitch. So I accept the slow batting on day one. And rain started falling Saturday afternoon and it went over into Sunday. And we only have a limited amount of play on Sunday also. So I accept the slow batting. Wednesday, we were brilliant. We came out and we scored 4.18 runs per over, made 447. Chanda Paul got his double century. We broke so many records. The long-standing record for over 32 years that Greenwich and Ains set, Chanda Paul and Bradway broke it. We were brilliant for the first three days. We declared we put Zimbabwe into bat. We bowled them out for 104. We, we had them 114 for three on the third day. That's Monday. And the fourth morning, we came back. We got four wickets. And at lunch, there were 197 for seven. Now, just before lunch, Bradway got a wicket, Mazakazda, to make it the seven wicket. That was 77.3 overs. So when we came back after lunch, Bradway finishes over that make it 78. That's the old ball. He gave Joseph the new ball. No, he did not give Joseph the new ball. Joseph continued to bowl the new ball. The old ball, sorry. Joseph continued to bowl the old ball. And that's where the game changed. So we played three and a third 
day of good cricket, and then Brathwaite start making poor decisions. And then we have to hang on on the fourth day to make sure we don't lose any wickets so that we don't collapse. It was just some poor tactics. But let me go in in detail why West Indies did not win this test match. The first reason why West Indies did not win this test match is that we did not select Gabriel. Gabriel should have played in this test match. Now, we saw where Roach and Older were very, very ordinary in this test match. Mark you, Older got two wickets in the first innings, but who are those two? Nine and ten? Anybody can get nine and ten. Roach was so ordinary. And I'm convinced that if Gabriel have played and opened the bowling with Joseph, it would be a different thing. And Zimbabwe would not have made 200 runs in their first innings. And they would not have survived in their fourth innings either, for we would have had more time to bowl them up. So the first reason why Zimbabwe draw the match was because we did not select Gabriel. I said before the match that Rhodes and Holder are not good overseas players. They do not get any wickets overseas. And it was a disgrace and very embarrassing to see all the bowling off spin today. That tactics was poor. And I was looking on and saying, if I was a sponsor of West Indies team, and I look at that team looking so unprofessional, would I sponsor them? No. All that should not have bowled off spin when you have Chase in the team who can bowl off spin. You have the captain who can bowl off spin. You have Blackwood who can turn his arm over. If all that is going to bowl, he needs to run in and bowl and hit the pitch hard. But all that is going backward. And it is time that we realize that all that is now more concentrating on T T20 cricket. It was a poor decision not to select Gabriel in that starting 11. The second reason why we lost the game is what I was discussing earlier. Just after lunch on the fourth day, Joseph should have gotten the new ball. If Joseph have got that new ball, those of us who were watching that, that match, Mavuta, who made 54 batting at number nine, when Joseph was bowling the old ball to him, he was hopping around like a cat on a tin roof, on a hot tin roof, when Joseph was bowling the old ball to him. When Joseph came out of the attack and Roach and Older was bowling the new ball, and this is the reason why I cannot understand why you do not give your premier fast bowler your very fastest bowler in the team, the man who has gotten three wickets so far in the team, you did not give him the new ball. But you gave two bowlers the new ball who could not beat the bat. And the same batsman who was hopping around when Joseph was bowling the old ball started beating Roach and Older to all part of the ground, although they were bowling the new ball. That is where the match turned. After lunch, when Joseph did not get the new ball, that is where the match turned. And that is the second reason why Zimbabwe draw the match. So the first one was that Gabriel should have been in the team. The second one is that after lunch, Joseph should have gotten the new ball. The third thing why Zimbabwe draw, draw the match is that on the fourth afternoon, after Zimbabwe declared, we faced 13 overs. And despite the brilliance of Brathwaite and Chanda Paul, and they are lovely batsmen, and I, I have said on Monday that they are world class. They are world class. But not because they are world class, it doesn't prevent me from saying that you cannot face 13 overs when you have a match to win and only make 21 runs. They should have scored at least 40 runs. 
yesterday evening. At least 40 runs. They should have least score at three runs per over. Come this morning again, we batted too slow again. Bratwaite made a, uh, not Bratwaite, Blackwood made a 50. And his 50 was on the quicker side. I think his 50 came off 60 something ball. Reefer also made a 50. Finally, Reefer made some runs. But Reefer 58 came off 106 ball. You cannot be batting so slow when you're setting up a game to win on the last day. So the, the reason number three why Zimbabwe draw that match is because we batted too slow Tuesday evening and we batted too slow Wednesday morning. The fourth reason why we draw that match. In this fourth innings, when the fourth innings, we were bowling in the fourth innings, that is Zimbabwe's second innings. I did not understand why we have so many fielders on the inside and we were bowling so straight at the stump. The field placing lacked imagination and it was too defensive, especially when Zimbabwe was 83 for four after T. And we know that there's no way that Zimbabwe could win the match again. We still have fielders in the deep. I did just did not understand that. So the field placing was defensive and it's lack imagination. And we were bowling too straight. We were bowling almost a mid and leg stump line. Instead of bowling two, three inches outside the off, off stump, we were bowling too straight. I think if we were bowling just outside the off stump, generally it is called the corridor of uncertainty. If we were bowling there, I also think would have won the match. Look at Motti, for example. Motti got four wickets in the innings, six in the match. Brilliant. I'm so happy for him. And you in this community, you know that I champion the cause of Motti day after day. But it does not prevent me from saying that I never saw one delivery from Motti hitting the rough outside the left under's half stump. I did not saw what I did not see one. He got many deliveries to turn off the proper era of the pitch, and that was good. But there was not one delivery where he tried to drive that ball in the rough and try to see if he can get it to do something unusual. So the fourth reason is that we bowl too straight and the field pacing lacked imagination and it was too defensive. Believe it or not, we underball mayors. I do not understand why mayors on the ball four over, eight overs in the Zimbabwe first innings. Mayors is one of our better bowlers. Myers is a top class bowler and we saw it time and time again. I criticized Myers for opening the bowling in T20 international cricket. But with the red ball, Myers is a different beast and we underball Myers. Maybe it's because we have too many bowlers in the team. Maybe. And so everybody after you have to bowl. And that is another reason why we use too many bowlers. So no one gets into their work, so to speak. We use too many bowlers. And I believe that those are the six reasons. There may be more, and you in the chat can tell me. But there may be more, but these are my six reasons why we lose the match. Zimbabwe is not good enough to compete with West Indies for five days if we pick the right team and we use the correct strategy and cut out favoritism. I strongly believe so. I'll go to your comments. Let's take your comments. Sorry. Good night, how are you doing? Breaker environment, yeah. I tell people need, we needed an X factor. That is so true. Oh, you ain't see much ball left arm spin. Oh, you ain't see Motti ball left arm leg spin. Now, Motti is a slow left arm orthodox spinner. 
I don't think he's called leg spin. Leg spin is when you you you, you use the wrist, but Mutti Mutti is like this, so he's a slow left arm orthodox spinner. Good night, cricket forum. It's time we find a replacement for Roach, Older, and Reefer. It's time West Indies coach stop him feet, stamp him feet. I believe that Barnard, Gabriel, and Thomas to come in the next game. I have said it from day one, Nikiba Jacobs. When I pick my squad before West Indies pick their squad, I did not have Jacobs, not Jacobs. I did not, sorry, I'm mixing up your name. I did not have Roach, Older, Reefer, or Chase in my squad. I did not have those four players in my squad. When I picked the team for the match that just concluded, I did have Chase and Older in the team because of the squad that is there, and nothing can change about that. But there's no way Roach should have played. Roach records over the year away from the Caribbean is poor. And I've, I have said it on many occasions. In the Caribbean, Roach is our best fast bowler. Away from the Caribbean, Roach record is poor. Warrican, who played 12 overseas matches and got 41 wickets, is there sitting on the bench. While Roach played 32 overseas matches and got only 70 wickets. So Warrican is getting almost four wickets per match when he played overseas, and Roach is getting less than two wickets per match when he played overseas, and Warrican is on the bench. I am not here advocating for Warrican to play, but I'm just saying, what is the standard that allow Roach to play over Warrican? If Gabriel had played, would have certainly won this match. I'm telling you, Gabriel should have played. He's over ball, he's over ball, he over ball is Bajan's ban. That is a that that keep on coming up that there's a bias between Bajan, there's a favoritism among the Bajans. And I remember Manchester United, the football team. You many of you I know support Manchester United. Last year, when Olegana Solska was the coach, and he continues to pick his favorite. Manchester United was doing poorly. This year, Ten Hag is in, and Ten Hag is picking the proper team, and the team is performing much better. Kemar Road should never have gone on the tour. History back up with his record has shown that he has, has not performed well on overseas tour. Thank you, Garfield Malcolm. I've been saying that, and I've been challenged, and I've been taken on. People said that I ate Roach. I do not eat Roach. I have nothing against Roach. I have to be consistent in what I do. And I cannot come here and say that Roach should play when his overseas record does not justify him playing. I have nothing against Roach. Absolutely nothing. The reason we drew the match is because you and I is not the coach. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Peters. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Certainly. Thank you. Thank you very much. That that really made my evening and gave me a good laugh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Peters. Thank you very much. Remember that Chanda Paul and Brathwaite is the most important batsman in the team. No, no, than the other nine players. Because if any one of them out, West Indies team is collapsed early on day four. I understand that. And that is one of the points that I want to drive home. I've said it before, but I don't know if people quite pick it up. Desmond Ames, who is our chief selector, he played in a team with six specialist batsmen, six specialist batsmen. Larry Gomes and Richards could turn over their arm, but it's still six specialist batsmen, a wicked keeper, and four top-line bowlers. The very best, four very best bowlers and the six very best batsmen. That team is arguably the greatest cricket team of all time. That's the team Desmond Ains playing with six specialist batsmen. Yet, Desmond Ains, as our chief selector, is selecting a team to go on a tour, not a team, a squad, to go on a tour 
And in that squad, Desmond Ains named four, four specialist batsmen. And in the team, how many play? Three. Three specialist batsmen was in this team. It shows your point, Jacobs, because we are not playing specialist batsmen. And that is one of the reasons, too, why we lost the match. Because Brackweight have too many options in the bowling department. And so when there are too many options, people don't take on the responsibility as serious as they should. That's, that's a given. Because you always put the responsibility on the other man. There are too many bits and pieces cricketer in our test squad. They must be proper batsmen and proper bowlers. And then we may have one all-rounder like Myers batting at number six. Nothing wrong with that. But there are too many bits and pieces cricketers. And that's one of our problems. I didn't get to watch the test match. But I heard that they're batting slow. Very slow. I have no problem with the batting on the first two days. Why? The sky was overcast. The pitch added moisture and we were laying a foundation. We batted well on the third day. But yesterday evening, it was terrible. And this morning, it was terrible. You cannot be setting up a test match to win it and going that slow. No, he switched. Who switched who switch and bowled some leg spin in what I'm saying? Or oh, older? Oh, he switched and bowled some leg spin. Oh, there was a time today when older was bowling half break. And I really was wondering, what's that for? Older bowled two overs of half break. Unprofessional. Nonsense. And he didn't pitch any of the half break. They were all low, full toss or very short. I don't think West Indies learned from Australia test. No, they didn't. Yes, Brathwaite and Chanda Paul did. Brathwaite and Chanda Paul did. Second test 11, Chanda Paul, Brathwaite, Bonner, Thomas, Blackwood, Mayers, the Silva, Chase, Joseph, Gabriel, Motti. That's not a bad 11. That's not a bad 11. Bonner and Thomas, Blackwood at, Blackwood at five, Mayers at six. The Silver at seven, Chase eight, Joseph Gabriel Motti. That's not a bad 11. That's not a bad 11 to take out Old and Roach. That's not a bad 11. Between tomorrow and Friday, I will pick my 11. That may well be my 11, Jacobs. You may, I may have no work to do. I may just come up with that 11. Well done. Well done. Kurt, how are you doing? Long time don't see. Good night, Mr. Cricket Forum. It's time for Older to step aside from Test Cricket. We need an all-rounder, not a bowler older, not even a match-winning bowler. I've said it on many occasions, and one person sent me an email, and the person was very disrespectful in the email, but it comes with the territory, and say that I'm picking an older, and what's going to happen when I don't have older to pick on? But I go where the facts lead me. And for all the last 15 test matches, he has not gotten five wickets in any of the matches. I'm not talking about five wickets in an innings. I'm talking about five wickets in a match. Check the stats for yourself. In his last 15 test matches, he has not gotten five wickets in a match. In fact, in all the last three test matches, he only got three wickets. Only three wickets in his last three test matches. So all that's averaging one wicket a match. It may, it may even go further. Probably for his last 10 test matches, I doubt if he get more than two wickets in one match. I'm not sure about that, so maybe I shouldn't say it. But what I know for a fact is that for his last 15 test matches, he has not gotten five wickets in any match. All that should not be in this team is... He has been a good server. And he's a stalwart of West Indies cricket. And we are not disrespecting him. We cannot take that away from him. He's a stalwart of West Indies cricket. But at this time, he's not doing well. Claude Murphy, I saw it and I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed to see, I see him bowling off spin. Very embarrassed, Claude Murphy. Send home some men and pick them 
informant from the ongoing 40. Well, they're not going to do that break environment, but we are going to see what is going to happen for the Zimbabwe, for the Zimbabwe, for the Zimbabwe tour. Justin Brazel, welcome to the show. Thank you for thank you for taking part. Who is your all-rounder you put today? Who's your all-rounder? If I'm picking the West Indies team, Mayers will bat at six, and he's my all-rounder. Mayers is averaging 36 or 37, they are both with the bat, and he's one of our very best bowlers with the red ball. He can really let this red ball go. Remember that Mayers used to open the bowling for Barbados a few years, well, some years ago before he had an injury. And after that, he developed his batting. But Mayers is really a really good bowler. Thank you, Justin Brazil. Continue to participate. Thank you. Old and road should go. I agree with that. I agree with that. Now, there are some other news in cricket today. Cricket West Indies women, finally, finally West Indies women won a match. Sri Lanka made 107 and West Indies replied with 111 for six. Ailey Matthews was a star. She got three for 17 from her four overs and then returned to make 50 of 48 deliveries before she was run out. So after umpteen matches, a lose track of how many matches the West Indies women have lost before they won this one. The last time they won a match before this was new against New Zealand. I don't remember how many matches they played between them. Even yesterday, they lost to New Zealand again in a warm-up match. These two matches are war World Cup warm-up matches. So they lost to New Zealand yesterday, but they beat Sri Lanka today. After umpteen matches, as I, as I have said, West Indies women have finally won a match. Thanks to Ailey Matthews her first half century since taking over as captain. Now the question that I have to ask, what is happening to Stephanie Taylor? Stephanie Taylor has not played a match, yet still she's part of the World Cup squad. She has been in South Africa for the tri-series between India, West Indies and South Africa. She did not play a match. We hear Brown, the manager of the team, Miss Brown, the manager of the team, saying that she's going to be ready. But here are two warm-up matches. West Indies have a World Cup match starting Sunday, and Stephanie Taylor has not played a match. We want to know if Stephanie Taylor is injured or she should be replaced. And I'm in no way disrespecting Stephanie Taylor. We are just asking a question. She is a part of the 15 women's squad. If she is not able to play, she needs to be replaced. If Cricket West Indies wants to keep her in South Africa as a mentor or a part of their coaching staff or somebody that they want around the team, they should do so, but not at the expense of having someone else in the squad. So we need to know what is happening to Stephanie Taylor. Is she still injured? Will she be ready for the World Cup match? But if she will be ready, why is it that she at least not taking part in these matches? Because without any practice, she, just going, she is just going to go into the World Cup matches without playing any matches for the past six months. We want to know what is happening to Stephanie Taylor. I'll take your comment before I go on to the next topic. My brother, don't study these people. They don't like the facts and reality. Older needs a pillow and go take a rest. Or <laughs> Claude, Claude Murphy. Uh, um, Indian? Okay, Indian. Our cricket really dropped way behind. T20 killing the cricket. In the Caribbean. A number of persons are saying so. Franchise cricket, cricket mashup older. Could be true. All while still a work is a miracle. I do not know. I must think that if we do not reach the semifinals of the World Cup, that Walsh should lose his job. Anthony, welcome to the show. First time participating. 
welcome your participation. With due respect to Ola for his service to us in this cricket, but it is time to let him go. We all agree with that. Very good, Anthony. The support is coming in. The first time I called for an older to be dropped from the team, I was attacked. I was attacked left, right, and center. So I'm very happy that persons now saw what I was saying. It's the same way you will recall last year when I said that Bonner is afraid of pace and Bonner does that bad pace well. I was attacked right here also. And you saw what happened in Australia. I'm not happy about that. I often said that I want the players to prove me wrong. But it so happened that most of the times I end up being right. Today's start marked the second round, the start of the second round of our regional four-day cricket competition. The matches were affected by rain. So in the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force game against the Leeward Islands Hurricane, I think only 51 overs were possible. Darren Bravo at the end was on 71, 71 not out. Nine fours. He hit nine fours and two sixes. He really looked good. You know that when Lara, Bravo, sorry, you know that when Bravo is batting at his best, he has a pleasing way to hit the ball. And he was really batting at his best today. He's on 71 not out. He hit nine fours and two sixes. Jeremiah Lowe got two for 19 for the Leeward Islands hurricane. So at the end of day one in that match, Trinidad and Tobago Red Force were 153, 151 for three. In the second match, also affected by rain, the Jamaican Scorpion. You remember before the start of the tournament, I said the Jamaican Scorpion bowling is strong, but the batting is thin. And a number of you in this community have said it. The batting is thin. And so the Jamaican Scorpion was bowled out today for 140. No one reached 50. I think Merchant made top score, but I'm not going to list a top score that is less than 50 here. I am not giving credence to mediocrity. Akeem Jordan got three for 48, Shamar Springer three for 11, and Kamari Boyce three for 26. Barbados pride in reply were 89 for two. Shamar Brooks and Jonathan no, Shamar Brooks and Jonathan Drakes, I think, are the batsmen at the crease. Or was it Shane Mosley? I do not remember who are the two batsmen at the crease, but I remember that Shamar Brooks is at the crease. So Barbados, in reply to Jamaica Scorpion 140, were 89 for two. Now, the match of the round and the star of the round, and I know persons like 007 will be very happy. And I expect 007 to come at me. I expect him to come at me. Windward Island Volcanoes are 292 for eight. Alec Atanase, after 31 innings and 22 matches, finally, finally score a regional four-day century. He went on to make 141. He played some lovely shot, especially through the offside. He looked very crips driving the ball through the offside. He hit 16 spanking, wonderful four in compiling a good 141. He needs to kick down now and make that cry for West Indies selection louder because I do believe we need specialist batsmen in the team. And it's a good start for Alec Atanase. Very good, well played 141. So too is Kimani Melius with his 192 last week and Machu Nandu. Melius did not make many today, did not pass 10 before he nicked off again. Just like in the first innings of the first match where he nicked off, he nicked off again. But Alec Atanes batted well. I take nothing away from him today. I still think that they need to bowl some short ball under his ribs. I think he has a weakness there. But I'm only saying this and hope that it get back to him that he need to work on that weakness, the short ball under his rib cage. But it's a, it was a wonderful innings. I take nothing away from him. 
Ryan John is on 15 at all. And I particularly like Ryan John. Ryan John bat like the Australians. He's either blocking it or he's hitting it. And so it was a good 15 at all. He hit five fours, and I'm telling you, those balls travel to the boundary like a rocket. I love Ryan John. He got 39 in the first match. He got eight wickets, and now he's on 50. And to know that Ryan John is playing because someone got injured last week, I'm very impressed with him so far, and it's someone that we need to look at. I want to say something about Atanes. Because Athanas is one of those names that is called regularly. And I just want to put things into context here. The reason why I could not call for Athanas as someone like Dobro 7 I've been calling is that last year in regional four-day cricket, Athanas played in five matches. He batted nine times. It, the runs that he scored last year was 222 runs. His average last year was 22.26. This year so far, in three innings. So he batted nine innings last year and made 222 runs. But this year, in three innings, his score have been 41, 51, and 141. So in three innings this year, Athanas have scored more runs that he scored in the entire season last year. Now, we can recall that Tej Narayan Chandapal in first-class cricket, his average before last year was 28. But last year, he averages almost 100 between the first-class cricket and the 18 matches that he played against Bangladesh. His 100 was 100 almost 100 and we saw the steps that chanda paul have taken and he's now a real star in the west indies batting i hope that despite Athena's average leading into this year it was 27.84 overall his half is off to a good start this year long may it continue and i hope it will continue and he will transition into the West Indies team just like Chanda Paul did. But for many years, Chanda Paul was averaging 28. I think Chanda Paul played almost 80 first class matches. Persons were saying, why wasn't he in the West Indies team before? Before last year, he was averaging 28. Last year, he averages almost 100. I wish Athanas all the luck. And I look forward to see what he's going to do in the second innings. He is one century away from making the trip to South Africa. But he has only one innings to do it. He needs to make another 100 in the second innings. And I think that he will be on the plane to South Africa. Please remember to slash a like on the video and to subscribe. Subscription is free. Darren Bravo. Darren Bravo should replace Older against the SA series. Let's see what will happen. We don't want to call that too quick. We hope that he will make some more runs. How many players show up them hands to go to South Africa from this team? How many players you think? I think about eight players. There have been some very good performances. And I just, at the end of this round, I will name the squad for South Africa. I'm waiting until the second test is finished and this round of the regional four-day cricket competition is finished. I, I, I want to keep a blank, objective mind for the time being. Break up the environment, send home some men and pick them, inform men from the... Uh, I would play Thomas and let Chase be the water boy. Okay, <laughs> Not, well, you know, I always love the difference opinion. I always love the difference of Cricket Forum, how many records Brathwaite and Chanda Paul broke? The last time I checked, it was about 11. I'm going to do a show and list all of those records, Jacobs. I'm, Nikimo Jacobs. I'm going to do a show and list all of them. But the last time I checked, it was about 11. It was many, many records. 
my brother don't study those people they don't like the facts oh okay it seems like i'm reading comments that i've read already should should darren bravo replace reefer for south africa tour yes i know i i cannot answer that question just yet i need him to make a hundred and a big one jacob you want i don't know i care to kill him well that's not true you know because we know that bravo doesn't Bravo and the banner is in the same category when it comes to pace. Darren Bravo should replace Older against uh, in the SA series. What about Machunedu? I see persons are calling for Bravo. Well, what about Machunedu? What about Kimani Melius? These guys did make runs also. So let us be objective. I'm not saying I'm against Bravo going. But I'm just saying that there are other names in the cap. There are other names on the table. What about Atanes? So let's be objective, right? There are other names, so let's be objective. Just let's wait and see. I was very impressed with Motti. He was ultra attacking and tried his very best. I agree. Claude Murphy, how many times you heard me call for Motti inclusion in the West Indies team? You know, sometimes I think that I should come here and say foolishness. Because if I come here and say foolishness, Cricket West Indies will do the right thing. But when they send their spy to listen to the show, and their spies take back the information, they do the opposite of what I said. Because they know if they do what I said, it is going to work. And they know that I'm going to come here and said, you see, it worked. They do not want me to come and say that. But all along, I've been calling for Motti to be in the team. He bowled well. The only challenge that I have with Motti today is that he did not use the rough outside the left-handers off stump. That was the only problem I had with Motti today. When Lara was playing, who was the better batting between Lara or Tenduka? Who would you rather watch? I, I would want. That's a very tough decision. That's a very very tough decision. I love to watch Lara. I remember one night, I sat up in my bed all night watching Tenduka made a big hundred against Australia. But I also remember that I sat up and watched Lara two seventy seven. At the Sydney Cricket Ground. It, it's hard. I'm telling you the truth. I don't know which one I would rather. I'm telling you. I, I would like to watch both of them every day. Thank you, Justin. Thank you for that question. But uh, it's two really, really great batsmen. Bravo need to take up coaching. Nikki, my squad for South Africa Bradway, Chanda Paul, Thomas, Bravo, Brooks, Mayers, Blackwood, the Silver, Joseph, Gabriel, Motti, Cornwall, Seals, if fit. Seals won't be fit. He won't be fit until April. Older banner Casey Carty. Casey Carty need to deliver. His average is 25.25. Mr. Justin Barry, I'll pick Lara and Tenduka in my team every time. Two bosses. That is so true. The Lara and Tenduka debate is one that is raging in Jamaica. Zakaria Ali. I don't have all my glasses, so I hope I got the name right. I agree. We need new blood. Bravo old. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you for your contribution. I love to see when new persons are contributing. Kimani Melius and Macho Nedu, that's Nakin Jacob. There's another new person contributing too. Team need more Guyanese players. Anil R. Chetram, team need more Guyanese players. The Barbadians are going to say that we do not have enough Barbadians. But one of the things that I try to do, Anil, and I thank you for your contribution, and it is good for you to defend your countrymen and I know Guyanese are passionate about their cricket. I know I've been there and I felt it. They're passionate about their cricket. But I try to pick players and not necessarily the country that they come from. And I have been a big, big supporter of Motti. Almost every time I talk about Motti. And you would have seen the videos that I've done about Ch uh, Chanda Paul. I support Guyanese. I support West Indian cricketers. I do not try to pick country, but it's good though that you support your countrymen. Jacob's question cricket forum. Can Chanda Paul break Lara record? 
And Chanda Paul is 26 and he just started. If Chanda Paul should break Lara record, I doubt it. I doubt it he will break it. But if Chanda Paul should break Lara record, West Indies will be at the top of cricket again. Because he would have to make so many runs in the next seven years. He would have to make more than 11,000 runs in the next seven years. That's more than 1,500 runs per year. And take into consideration that West Indies is only going to play 26 tests in the next four years. So for him to make 1,500 runs per year for the next four years, in West Indies only playing six test matches. That means he's scoring over 200 runs in every test matches. So it, it will be very, very difficult and he's, he's, he's 26. Very, no, no good, no good. Christopher Williams, I say yes. Team, team need better bowlers too. Well, yes, we need some good bowlers and we are looking out. But I think Motti, Mayers, Joseph, Gabriel are top class. There are four top class bowlers I think can hold their own. Mayers, Motti, Gabriel, and Joseph. We have four good bowlers there. We just need to play them and make sure they bowl enough. We already break a record in five innings. Anil R. Chetaran. Thank you for your comment. Thank you all for tuning in. Please remember slash a like on the video and click on that subscribe button. It is free. I'm going to pick my 11 for the next test match tomorrow or Friday. I, we are going to win the second test match. I don't think that Brathwaite is going to make those same mistakes. I don't think Lara is going to sit by and allow them to make those same mistakes again. I think that in this match, Lara just watched to see what is happening. And I think it will be a different thing in the next test match. Thank you all for tuning in. Please have a great evening and take care for your loved ones. See you tomorrow. India play Australia tonight, starting at 12 midnight in the Eastern Caribbean, 11 p.m. in Jamaica. The Australians are saying that this series is bigger than the Hashes. I don't know if they are just jiving at England, but thank you all for tuning in. Why is Narayan not making himself available? Well, that's a difficult question to answer, Peters. I, I wish I wish I know the answer. I'd make a lot of money if I know the answer. Good question, though. Thank you all for tuning in. Slash a like on the video. Click on that subscribe button and have a great night. Take care of your loved ones and be good now. Good night.